Minister for Infrastructure, Transport, D Disaster Management and Meteorological Services. And each minister may speak for up to 20 minutes. After each minister, I will then invite the leader of the opposition or his designate to speak on the statement for no more than five minutes. There will also be a response from the leader of the National Federation Party or his designate to also speak for five minutes. There will be no other debate. I now call on the Minister for Industry, Trade, Tourism, Local Government, Housing and Community Development, the Honourable Pramila Kumar, to deliver a statement. You have the floor, ma'am. Mr. Speaker, sir, Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Ministers, Honourable Members of Parliament and Members of the Public. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for the opportunity to take the floor to explain the business license reform that came into effect on 1st January 2020. The five-year and 20-year National Development Plan is the pillar for reform priorities for Fijian government, hence the establishment of the Digital Transformation Program. This is a four-year initiative implemented to oversee Fiji Relies its full potential and develop a modern and inclusive economy. Under this initiative, the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism is mandated to implement reforms in ease of doing business to ensure business processes are revitalized and Fiji achieves a ranking of 50 by 2025 doing business report. As part of the digital Fiji reform programs, the Ministry has partnered with the World Bank Group and the Singapore Corporation Enterprise to implement reforms under Digital Fiji. Mr. Speaker, sir, as per the 2020 Ease of Doing Business report released in October 2019, Fiji has dropped a rank from 101 to 102. It is noted that whilst Fiji's rank has gone down, the doing business score has improved by 0.35 as compared to a 0.04 improvement in the 2019 Ease of Doing Business report. This is an indication that reforms have taken place for doing business, but it is not as fast as other countries participating in the Ease of Doing Business process. Other Pacific Island countries have dropped at a faster rate with Samoa down eight ranks from 90 to 98, Tonga from 91 to 103, and Vanuatu from 94 to 107. It is also worth noting that Fiji is the second best Pacific Island country to do business in. In addition, it is equally important to note that the overall message about the performance of countries in East Asia and Pacific region is that the pace of business reform has slowed down. The number of reforms in the region over the 12, months, uh, 12 month period to 1st May 2019 fell by 10. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is worth noting that despite the various reforms that were taken in 2019, which included the launch of this Fiji portal, which provided one-stop information on starting a business and obtaining construction permits, registration of company, uh, companies being brought online and launch of the personal properties register, Fiji's doing business ranking slipped in the 2020 Ease of Doing Business report. This has happened because these reforms have not been noted as reforms for the 2020 report. The World Bank Group doing business reports covers only reforms that have taken place before April May of the year. Mr. Speaker, sir, in an effort to improve ease of doing business and business climate in Fiji, as of 1st January 2020, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism and Local Government rolled out new processes for business licensing and renewal of licenses. 
Our Business Licensing Act 1976 grants the municipalities powers to establish bylaws for efficient running of their respective municipalities. However, this led to each municipality in creating their own licensing regimes and different categories of business licenses and requirements. This reform has introduced a standardized and simplified process across 13 municipal councils to improve the ease of doing business in Fiji. According to the World, Bra uh, World Bank Group Doing Business Report, it takes 40 days to start a business in Fiji. There were at least eight procedures that a business had to comply with in order to get a business license to start operations. This included the provision of business name registration certificate, foreign investment registration certificate for foreign investors, tax identification number registration letter, business name holder's name and contact, including a copy of their photo ID or any other form of ID, copy of consent letter from landlord if renting, copy of occupational health and safety letter, copy of National Fire Authority certificate, and copy of building completion certificate. These eight processes were illogical and created barriers to starting a business in Fiji. Mr. Speaker said, why should a business provide a copy of the building completion certificate when this information should be with municipal councils? So the businesses were given a runaround to get all this information before they could even get a business license. The processes were all front-loaded and required that municipalities ensure all the regulatory requirements of other organizations were met before a business license was issued. With the business license reform, a startup or existing businesses requires two documents. That is business registration and tax registration to obtain a business license. So we have moved from eight requirements to two requirements. In addition, business license applications are assessed based on risk which was previously measured with the same yardstick. Now businesses that are classified as low risk can start a business immediately and meet compliance with other legislations within six months. And if it is a high risk business, for example, food handling, manufacturing, use and disposal of chemicals or nightclubs, then these businesses must obtain other licenses and permits before commencing businesses. Mr. Speaker, sir, the reforms in the area of business licensing has led to streamlining and eliminating processes and reduction in time and cost to start a business. All municipalities around Fiji are using the same procedure and the same application form for the business license. Mr. Speaker, sir, other significant reforms in business licensing includes startups and micro-enterprises with up to three employees are exempt from the business licensing fee for the first year of operation. Micro-enterprises with one to three employees are given a 50% discount when renewing the business licenses. Startups that will operate from a property that has OHS and NFA certification will not be required to obtain these certificates again unless the business makes structural changes to the property. Home-based businesses are now recognized and can operate subject to certain conditions. This new provision legalizes businesses such as tailoring, grog shops, and catering, to name a few, that operates from home. This will give a further fuel to the MSMEs and encourage more Fijians to become job creators than job seekers. Mr. Speaker, sir, a business license can be renewed for a period of up to three years by paying the requisite fees. Under this reform, existing businesses will be required to notify the relevant agencies if there is a change in the, uh, in the structure within the license period. For example, a change in the legal structure, one must notify registrar of companies. 
the physical structure of the premises to National Fire Authority and OHS, or change in the number of employees, then it must be reported to municipalities and OHS. If these changes are not made, the business is not required to op obtain all these approvals. Mr. Speaker, sir, this reform is a real game changer, which will lift Fiji's ease of doing business. We have been able to reduce the time taken to start a business from 40 days to approximately eight days. Mr. Speaker, sir, in many other countries, such as New Zealand, Georgia, Canada, and Singapore, a business had to meet two requirements, and that is business registration and tax registration in order to start operation. Nevertheless, businesses had to comply with other legislation and regulations, including OHS and health requirements. In other words, responsibility for compliance rests with the business and the relevant regulatory agencies that carefully enforce the law through various proactive mechanisms, including spot checks and penalties. Mr. Speaker, sir, the municipalities will provide a list of registered businesses to all agencies to help in compliance. This means that regulatory authorities are now directly accountable for the service turnaround time. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to highlight some of the results noted from the business license reforms. Nosori Town Council has seen a 72% increase in issuance of business licenses in January 2020 compared to the same period last year. That is, 810 business licenses were issued in January 2020 compared to 470 in January 2019. In Suva, 193 new business licenses were issued compared to 74 in January 2019. Suva City Council was able to issue renewal of business licenses in less than 24 hours whilst new business licenses met the 48-hour benchmark. All municipal councils, from the uh, smallest to the biggest, have been able to successfully uh, roll out the new process. Mr. Speaker, sir, business license reform is designed to make it easier to do business in Fiji, and it is also to ensure that municipal councils are performance-oriented and deliver timely services to citizens. Mr. Speaker, sir, as we modernize the way Fijians interact with and access information on government services, we will ensure that most up-to-date and accurate information is available in real time. This is the beginning of a journey towards digital platform for doing business. The business licensing and starting a business reforms are part of the larger reforms that the Fijian government is undertaking to enhance the doing business environment. Digitalization is a crucial component of improving processes and procedures. This year, the submission and approval for construction permits will be brought online, and by September 2021, Starting a business will be completely online. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for allowing me to take the floor. I thank the Honorable Minister. As you know, the procedures, since the leader of the opposition or his designate, as well as the leader of the National Federation Party or his designate, are not here which normally they would take the floor at this time and speak for five minutes, we will move on to the next ministerial statement. And I now call on the Minister for Infrastructure, Transport, Disaster Management, and the